And top of the morning to you. Hey, I'm Michael. Grandkids call me Ruth. Thanks for being on Ruth Doodles Live. It is Monday morning. It's November 22nd. Where does the time go? Uh, who who asked that question? Well, I think I just did. But I mean, you know, we always say, where does the time go? And you go, well, it, it just keeps on going until God stops it. So there we are. Glad you're on the show this morning. Um, man, it makes me... Um, uh, makes me kind of sentimental for the cool. I'm cold today. I'm actually cool here. I woke up and it was raining and it's grayer. The leaves are coming down with the rain. Trees are going to be bare. They're going to be shivering. And uh, and it made me think of Maine. It made me think of my trip to Maine. And so I rolled that little Maine intro there again because I absolutely already miss watercoloring in Maine. Um, Pilling around here on the desk uh, with a little Christmas tree. And uh, there it is right there. Just boop, there it is. And, and it has a lot of black in it. And guess what? That's just my fountain pen. So uh, piddling around here, making sure everything works. I literally didn't have, um, you know, I cooked biscuits on Tuesday and then uh, went into a tailspin to finish the project for uh, these people that delivers today. I'm going to show you a couple pictures of what I've delivered today. And uh, then did the last minute notice, like uh, Thursday or Friday, Aaron calls and says, hey, I've got an opening in this art show and kids are doing this, 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 and Andy, her husband's doing this, and this, and this, and uh, they he, he they planted a church. So I need to go do this art show. And we went, we're in, let's go, withhold nothing. So Yaya and I uh, helped uh, run that. That was fun. That was just really fun. And as a matter of fact, matter of fact I'm going to spend a little bit of time this morning telling you about the artist that I met. And it's given me some real insight, not new insight, but insight that I think it's time that I share with you about your artwork and what you, some other things you might need. So there it is. So that's it. I'm going to paint a little bit for you today, but first I'm going to just say hello here. Let me show you the desk. It's pretty clean, except for this little tree that I started doing right here. And I started with a Kakuno fountain pen. Um, Got to love this pen. Remember this started with this. About a year ago, a little over a year ago, I bought this pen, Kakuna, K-A-K-U-N-O. It's a, it's made by Pilot. It's really kind of a maintenance-free pen. It's about as maintenance-free as my Lamy pens. This is the Lamy Safari. This is a medium uh, nib, so it lays down a pretty heavy line. This is called the Fine. Then I have the Ultra Fine, one of these also. Um, and I just use, uh, I use uh, black ink that comes with this Pilot ink in this also. It's a... It's a refill. You don't have to, you know, the old days of sticking the pen down in there and pumping it up. It uses refills, and I keep them in a little tin here, like so. Uh, I have to tell you about something that I bought. There it is right there at the art show. Um, that's from one of the artists. So let me say hello, and let's go from there, okay? And that, well, thanks for being on the show. First post in, and then Hensland from up in Bird Island. Karen Binder, Bender. Um, sender of uh, lots of notes. I see them flying out. Thanks for being on the show. Bob, thank you from the, uh-oh, ecliptic cornfields of Iowa. <laughs> ecliptic. Ecliptic. Man, I'm going to have to look that word up. That is pretty super fantastic, okay? Uh, thanks for being on the show, my friend. Donna Sell Barton, good morning to you. Pat Hahn, Normandale, uh, uh, Janice Scott, thanks for being on here. Ricky Govars, uh, thank you for being on the show. B, welcome, welcome, welcome. Dorothy Beasley, Julie, you and Bob um, uh, appreciated your note um, in the uh, post. I think it was Saturday when I was walking around showing Aaron's stuff. Uh, Jennifer Yentz, thank you. Good morning to you. And Burke, good morning from Soggy Greenville. Yeah, man, a lot different. It was cold. Burke and his wife, uh, Catherine, walked up. Uh, to uh, True Cotton Booth, and uh, actually, I was over getting a cup of coffee and a pastry. In fact, he posted a picture on Roos Crew. I'm sitting there with my hand in the bag, like, uh oh, got caught with my hand in a cookie jar. Dang, it was a good, good, good. Uh, I wish I had one right now. It was. Let's see, where's my where's my picture picture here? I'm lost. Ding, there it is. Yeah, I've just put my show back together because I remember I had everything moved down to the kitchen, and I had a shoot, big shoot on Tuesday. So I had to have all my gears, all my different tripods and all that stuff, all my gear. And I went down there and uh, shot a, a video for uh, United World Mission, uh, president of the missionary company. Got that edited off and sent out. But, uh, Bert, good to see you, man. It was fun to actually meet you. You walked up and uh, 
we have we have a common likeness, although he loves artwork. Uh, he loves, uh, and he doesn't do it yet. He welded uh, as an early man. He said, young man, he says, he wants to learn how to blacksmith. So I was like, okay, maybe you and Skeeter. And Skeeter and his wife, Kathy Powell, showed up at Greenville. So it was good to catch up with Skeeter. And he sings the praises of the Roos Crew people and also just this community who was so generous for uh, the David's Table. And thank you so much. I think Skeeter's on the show this morning, too. I think I saw his name pop up here. So, Bert, good to see you, my friend. You were there. Deborah Lynn Tauber, thank you. Linda Linhart, Kathy Mora, Gene Anthalzer, Rhonda D. Hart from Faith, North Carolina. There it is. Beverly Schmidt. Missed you in Greenville. Uh, if you came by, I missed you. Fern Skelly, uh, June Jones, Patricia Evans. If it's soggy on the seacoast of New Hampshire, I'm betting it's kind of chilly up there, too. There's Skeeter Powell. Good morning, my friend. Good to see you and your dog, Chief. And um, that was kind of fun. Uh, Randall Taylor Craven, Karen Pulver. Uh, Karen Pulver, am I right? And am I thinking wrongly? Did you paint the turkey? Did I see a turkey that you painted? And somebody said, yeah, we know Rue doesn't like turkeys. I, 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 I didn't say I didn't like to see them painted. I don't like to eat them. Uh, I will eat a honey. I, I will eat a, uh, maybe a smoked turkey, um, smoked ch cheddar sandwich, but I don't like to cook turkeys anymore. I just, my friends, my family doesn't want to take the leftovers. And so uh, Thanksgiving for us is lobster bisque and um, uh, uh, tenderloin, uh, French au poivre, you know, where you just sear it and smoke it. And, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. The tenderloin, of course, you know, you cut the tenderloin. I might make some biscuits and cut off a little pieces of tenderloin and just make tenderloin biscuits. And, and with, with a few mashed potatoes and something green. Happy Thanksgiving to me. Okay. Uh, Dolores Bolin, Leslie uh, McClellan from South Dakota. Wow, way out there. Holy schmoly. Um, Dolores looking for an artful day. Kristen Klingman catching up. Glad you're here. Uh, Iowa harvest is complete. There we go, she says. So I didn't know you had our Iowa harvest going on. I better you ha better have it in by now. So get it all it in. Get all your silage cut. All right. Uh, Dinah Nicholas, thank you for being on the show. Just jumped in the other night to see Jason's uh, Inspiration Show and loved it very much. Uh, felt inspired to even follow along there for just a minute. Don't think I, I didn't. Hold on. Let's see. Not the crows. I had a couple crows in here. Not a lobster. These are all just painted when we... Sit down and have a cup of coffee somewhere. I carry this with me. I like this painting. I don't know what it's going to be captioned yet, but this crow and this bee. Because, 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 because. Oh my gosh, maybe that's it. Maybe it's because. <laughs> I'm going to have to rip that out. Look at this. So I, I got carried away uh, with other comments and listening, but as uh, as Jason was sketching the other night, you know, and he just gets into this, he uses a fountain pen most of the time, and he's even got the Lammy now, you know. And, uh, but, you know, he, he goes into these little sketches and all these little drawings that he does. He's also left-handed, you know, and I'm telling you, believe it or not, the best blacksmiths that I ever saw and worked with were left-handed and artists who left-handed, you know, you think you have a, a get go until you have that, until you have that fountain pen and you go, uh Oh, careful. Cause this, my hand's going to go in it somewhere. But anyway, I love this. So while he was doing his thing, with all the spires and of the Turkish empire and all the stuff that he does. I have to send him a song too. Um, I was, I was into watching what he was doing and it fascinated me. And he takes his brush and lays it in there and he had some cool green ink. I want some green ink. I think that's what I'm going to have to get next, man. So just put a little green in Anyway. So that's my tribute to, I, I saw him doing that and I'm going like, dang, that guy has fun. Anyway, this is my little notepad that I carry with me. Now I'm going to just get that all over the place. Let me put it over there. Um, these are just little drawing pieces of paper. Um, I, I want you to just have fun with your art, please. If you're not, you're missing out. So uh, John Robert Small, I saw your post. Uh, John Robert Small is getting ready to, uh, I know some of you are doing cool things. Uh, like Chris Whitaker the other day had uh, several of her pieces out for just a little auction. And I think they all sold. Congrats. Um, 
I also saw where John Robert Small is going to do, and he, he and I have had a, a conversation about this just in email way back when, and um, with it always get encouragement from me to say, you need to move forward with your art? Yes, move forward with your art. I tell you all the time, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I'm, I'm going to make a plan. And I've been thinking about little ways that I can change the show and change things. And I'm going to make it probably a shorter show for YouTube than just some information stuff. It's going to be called, ready for this, Rue 857. That just, just came to me. That just came to me. John Robert Small is doing a, a, a workshop, uh, a class on acrylics. And that dude is knocking out some coffee cups and, uh, and who knows. Um, all right. So, uh, Linda Schleitning, thank you for being on the show. Um, fun art show. Thank you for taking us. You bet. Patricia Evans says all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. I went for a walk on a winter's day. Um, Terry Tardy from Coos Bay, Oregon. Terry Tardy's on the show, so that means I'm going to have to make sure I have turquoise in the pan. There it is right there, Terry Tardy turquoise. Got it. We'll, we'll put something. Michelle, thanks for being on the show. Michelle and um, you guys who do Roos Crew um, and post on there, so encouraging to each other, and so I'm going to jump on that. But first thing I want to do, Sharon Clark, Kathy Shanley. Kathy Shanley, I don't know if I've said hello before, but hello. Pat Lightbody. Um Dolores Sue Reagan from Minnesota, Jean Peterson from Orlando. I mean, don't you love this? Uh, Melanie Phillips, uh, uh, Kelly Raylene, and Lisa. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, here we go. They're just piling on. Everybody's jumping on the show. I love it, I love it. It's 24 degrees in Wisconsin. That's why I live in Charlotte. I'm a left-handed violin player. That doesn't even sound, wait. Oh, my gosh. So that's bowing with the left hand. And, and and fretting was well, fretless, but fingering with the right. Yeah, that's that seems awkward to me. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, here we go. Mark Busby, uh, thank you, man. Got some uh, art coming your way. Thank you for all who purchased art in the Roodoodles auction. Most all that has been shipped out. I've got some more today, tomorrow that were being combined, and uh, some book orders. I've got more books coming, but some book orders are going out today, tomorrow, too. All right, so here we go. Um, let, let me paint something, and then I'll jump back on, and we'll show you a couple pictures here. Let's put on some nice music, and I'll just paint a little Christmas piece this morning. Uh, since I don't paint pilgrims, I posted some Christmas pieces. I had them on Facebook yesterday, just over the weekend. Uh, I actually meant to post them uh, on Etsy Saturday at the art show, and I just couldn't do anything there. Uh, and uh, internet kept dropping in and out so i posted them on etsy uh, and there's also some of Ruth's garden there it's a uh, it, garden if i had one um so some of the fruit and vegetables that uh, chip uh, fur and i've been painting are all on there all right so here we go uh my camera has decided to go in and out a little bit this morning so i think it'll clear up once i stop moving around here we go. Let's see. I don't know, a little music, and let me just grab some paper here and paint something Christmas-wise. I don't think I've put any Christmas music. A little, still a little early for some Christmas music. All right. I, uh, blo I blocked out something here on the pencil. And I'm just going to sketch it with a... Uh, We'll sketch it with a Pentail 05 needlepoint. Okay? Yeah, my veggies are all out there. And I, it took me a while to get up the nerve to post them. I've, I've sold some over the years. But these, I, w I wanted to hear my veggie. I wanted to hear them talk, you know? So um, so I painted a couple of beets and a turnip and uh, some radishes. <laughs> so they were fun. All right, so I think this needs a Christmas tree. Wait a minute. Hold on one second here. I got to bend down here and look in my ear. My, I just kicked my thermos over, which reminds me that I need some hot tea. It's a long way down to the kitchen. I'm upstairs in my upstairs attic and not down at the art bar painting today. So here we go. Here's the pen. Now, when I paint a Christmas tree, remember, remember, I don't paint them like we did in third grade. You can do that. That's great for folk art. 
but it doesn't leave me the looseness. It's like, now I got to color this in. So I start with that looseness already, just a little spring at the top and just some, and I, I like spruce trees because you can see the ornaments through the leaves. And so I just do these little squiggles. I come down here, the limb's going to cross a little bit. This one to go back up this way. Maybe this one's got a sweep in it. Maybe this one's come out a little farther. Uh, I uh, went and uh, helped a guy one day in uh, western North Carolina on his Christmas tree farm. He had five acres up on top of the mountain. I'm going like, dude, I get tired of walking back and forth in my garden in Knoxville when it was flat. And we got to go up there and then we got to go back down. Then we got to go up again. You got to do that all day long. He worked across this way, but still, man, that's a tough work. And, he, and I said, so how long before you sell Christmas trees? He goes, well, five to eight years. I'm going like, Great Scott. All right, so these are just little squiggle lines and I just pick up some here. Remember this pen's gonna bleed a little bit and I always put my Christmas trees in a bucket. Why? I, I don't know. It's just, it just uh, kind of makes me laugh. I just, uh, there's something about just putting a Christmas tree in, in a bucket and then I'm gonna just build the ground up a little bit here. Um, I want a little incline there and you'll see why in just a second. You can see I pencil something in here. And so here's a, uh, <clears throat> I think I can do this. I'll go ahead and paint that just while I'm here. This is a, this is a little bit of a, a um, uh, this is a number six uh, American Journey brush by Cheap Joe. It's uh, it's it's not a sable hair. It's just uh, interlock nylon. Works great for what I do, and the looseness. Up here on the side of my jar, I have... Uh, spilled some green spring green paint and I'm gonna come in and just pick some of that spring green up and I'm gonna go in there like this and just just dance it down through there look this is where uh, that your third grade teacher would come over and say to me you're running out of the lines and and I'm going like the lines are just there to give me an idea you know and so So uh, I'm just picking up two or three different greens here. And I, I, the first one was a spring green. The next one is called an olive, but it really, I don't think it's a true olive because olive is a little more uh, uh, without a sheen, without a shine. But then I might come in and I might put in a little bit of just touch this with some ultramarine blue, just touching it in there. Why would I do that? Because, well, it's a blue spruce, duh. All right, so there's a nice little tree. I uh, might come in and put just a little bit of black in there. Then I'm going to go catch some mummy brown over here. Just any kind of brown you got. Just bounce it in there just a little bit, just with a little, little touch of brown to build that up. See, that's a pretty good-looking Christmas tree, even if I did make it myself. Why do I always do buckets? Uh, rusty brown, just because uh, every bucket we had that I carried water to with the dogs when I was a kid, they were all brown. Okay, so uh, rusty brown. Here's a, here's another bucket sitting over here like this. Bell going that way. And in this bucket, the music too loud, I don't know if it is, sorry. All right, let's see here. I think just pull this microphone up just a little bit. All right. just got quit there or quiet didn't it okay so a little mess in that bucket I think you can see that coming through um, kind of fun <laughs> all right so I'm gonna come in here like this and then I'm gonna come up right here with a little fire and one on this side like so come in here Uh, if you don't paint with music, try it sometimes. Um, and I paint with instrumental. I don't need words because the words, uh, I'm so ADD that if I hear other people singing words, uh, I tend to start thinking about the words and I'll forget what I'm doing, which I need to sort of think what I'm doing a little bit. Uh, but instrumental stuff really helps me. I love painting to classical music. Uh, 
I, I can't paint to uh, rock and roll. It, I just I just can't. It uh, it affects my brush. I can't paint or do math to rap because its syncopation throws me off. Uh, all the things I can't do. Uh, you are the queen. <laughs> Linda, you're the queen of the trees. May I commission you to make a picture of Rude Doodle playing the cigar box violin at Christmas tree? Um, sure. Linda Sue, Reagan, send me a, I don't take commissions, and, but I don't take commissions to say, hey, this is my rooster, Rufus. Look how he is. Here's a photograph. We want you to paint him just like that. That's not my gift in life. My gift's an illustrative art. I know my limitations. Uh, but if you send me an email and say, if you want a Rue playing a cigar box uh, violin, I can do that. I've actually, uh, I don't have a violin anymore or a fiddle um, because I gave it to my grandson who has practiced 296 days in a row. And he's uh, about 11 years old. And he's, he says, this is what I'm going to do. And he is getting brilliant. It's really awesome. My, uh, the only violin that I have on my desk right now is this one right here. There it is. It has two real violin. Well, one and one I've whittled. Here it is. You can see it. It's made out of baling wire, which I thought would be a fun sculpture to do by hand. And it's 3D. And so I keep that hanging on my wall. And uh, uh, it plays really well, especially if I'm playing. You can't hear it. So there's my violin right there. I think I can hang it back up. Maybe I can't. Hold on. Oh, yeah back up there okay it hangs on my wall all right All right, I painted this a couple years ago at Christmas, I think, and uh, I just it made me laugh, and I thought I would uh, do it again. So I did a little blocking out with pencil. You don't see me do that very often. It's not that I'm afraid to. It's not like, oh, no, he broke the rule. I'll never forget when I was blacksmithing. I first started blacksmithing, and uh, I told this guy, I said, I, said, I think I'm going to get a gas forge. And he goes, no, you can't get a gas forge. You're a blacksmith. Blacksmiths use coal. And I said, yeah, and my, the inside of my nose looks like a coal cave, a tunnel, a mine, a coal mine. And, and I'm, I don't want that anymore. So I'd rather have a cleaner source of fuel. And so, and I also have to take an hour to get my coal all built and coked up so that it gives me the hot fuel. I learned that way. I learned the pioneer way, but I shifted to a better thing. I said, isn't the blacksmith's role in life to build a better mousetrap? To, if you're making 20 of these, make a jig so you can make them all better and faster and work smarter. And he goes, yeah, I guess so. I said, okay, I'm working smarter. So he just kind of walked off and went, well, thought you were going to be a primitive backpress. I said, I, I wasn't born in the 1700s, the 1800s. I, I, if I had, I think I would have done okay. But I learned that skill and I went forward. So in your drawing sometimes, if it helps you to do a pencil sketch and you go back and erase, that's, that's not a fault. That's why they still sell pencils. Sometimes I, because of my fast brain, because I'm doing this show, I don't want you to sit while I just decide to put everything in pencil. I just put the pen to it. And if I make a mistake, it's okay. I'll deal with that. And, and you've dealt with that. In fact, I think it helps you realize that art is all about learning as you make mistakes. You just go, I don't, I don't like that. It's, it's going out the door. Like this little tree. You know, I just smeared it a little bit. It's not going anywhere. It's going out the door. It's going in the rabbit pile, as some of you guys call it over there. Threw it in the rabbit pile. Uh, I had to dig one of those rabbits out one day and, and touch it up and sell it because um, I... Uh, What's the word? I cr cracked to peer pressure. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Look at this. That's um, There's my little painting this morning, and I'm kind of liking it. Uh, down the rabbit hole. <laughs> um, listen, if you, uh, Linda Sue, um, if you send me an email at rudoodles at gmail.com, we'll work something out. I'll paint you a small little uh, rooster playing. I like roosters playing instruments. I like that whole deal. It just makes me laugh. All right, hold it. Now I got to get some of this green paint off of my water jar up here. 
because it's getting on everything. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna uh, pull this camera in just a smidge. So watch. Here we go. So you can see what I'm doing here. See if I get a focus point. Not yet. Let me lay this right here. Get a focus on that pen. This camera has a hard time focusing sometimes on shiny objects. What's the deal, Lucille? Here, let's try this. So sorry. Hang on, but I want this to be focused. Maybe I can focus on the tree. There we go. That's better. All right. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, it's a little closer. You can see my palette here. I'm going to try and use the same brush all the way through. It's a number six. Um, I would use this bamboo, but I don't want is this loose. This is a looser for a little bigger painting. So here's what I got going. I'm going to paint from this direction coming back now. Let the tree dry a little bit. Except for I'll just put a little bit more green right in there. Just I'll dress that up a little bit. Clean out my brushes. All that works really well. Uh, all right, here we go. Grab a little gamboge. And just go in here and just do a little dancing in these little peeps that are right down here. There they are. Remember, I'm leaving holidays. Even in a work of art this small, I leave a holiday in there. Um, oh my gosh, and I'll have to tell you about Lenny. So I'm going to do that here in just a little bit. I'm going to tell you, I got some I got some things I want to talk to you about this morning. So get your notepad. I think they're going to help you in your art in the future. I just wanted to paint for you first. But uh, I want to tell you about Lenny that I saw at the art show. He's the guy who prints with tree, <laughs> uh, how to tree prints. Uh, I got to tell you, this is a funny little piece I got right here. That's funny. I bought this from uh, an artist named Randy, and she has a company called Gloria Faye. Um, and so also I met Lewis, Carl, and uh, Gwen. Gwen and I had a connection. The world is a BB, people. When you get out and you meet people, artists want to talk. And remember what I told you that I was? I'm an interrupter. And not just an interrupter for interruption's sake. An interrupter with purpose because I was on a mission. In fact, I saw this young lady right here. Uh, a young mom, three kids, uh, Blue House Papery. She had, had the tea towels. And I said, selfishly, I have to ask you a question about tea towels. She said, selfishly. I said, yes. I said, I'm not, you know, I want you to know I'm not trying to, I don't paint what you paint. I paint uh, illustrative, whimsical roosters, and I need some different tea towels. My tea towel printer um, is has changed over, and I had somebody that I trusted and I loved, and, and she said, oh, I like these, but and I said, uh-oh, here it comes. And I knew what she was going to say because I saw they all looked alike. The image is only this big. And I said, no, that means you've got you've got a an entire whitewashed continent of nothing printed. I want at least 11 by 14 the pre, with a, this lobster coming up and then my roosters. She said, if you find someone, tell me. So I said, give me your card and I'm on a mission. So we connected. Um, Sweet lady, good artist. Uh, Lenny, great guy, good artist, thinks like an artist. Uh, Lewis, uh, he thinks like an artist. Gwen is a potter and found out that Gwen, uh, maybe you heard me say this on the show, we connected from Black Mountain, North Carolina. And I said, she said, oh, I live near Black Mountain. And I said, yeah, I used to do some work at a camp up there. Or she said, I, I used to do some work at a camp up there. And I said, Camp Rockmont. And she goes, yes. And I said, yeah. You know, these three people, and I named them all off. And she goes, yes, I, I used to consult there. And uh, my boys went to camp there. and still dear friends with all those people. And she's going like, whoa. And then bumped into another lady who had been there. And she said, oh, I went to a Young Life camp one time uh, near Asheville. And I was on work crew there. I said, did you ever do that ropes course? She said, yes. I said, I built that in 1981. She goes, what? And so, you know, it's a small world's a BB, folks, especially for me, because God has allowed us just to jump all over the creation and be uh, uh, be wild people who interrupt. So I interrupted these artists, and it was kind of fun. All right, so you see where this is going already, huh? You've got it figured out. All right, what color is this bucket going to be? Well, of course, it's going to be green, just like this one. But this one's going to be a little uh, a little rustier with some... Um, with some black in it. It's just seen its day. Maybe this, you know, this would have been a good coal hod bucket, but I didn't do it that way. A little black right in here just for shadow's sake inside the bucket. And then I might get a smaller brush. I said I was going to do it all with the same brush, but I might just get a little smaller brush here and dance around in here with a little, oh, some ornament painting, just a little ornament painting. And even in these ornaments, what am I going to do? Whoops. Even in these ornaments, I'm going to try 
and leave some holidays. I'm just going to uh, use a little brush this is, and, and, and let that dry go in. I'm going to do a piece of yellow right here, there, right there. Just touch some yellow in there. Maybe a little piece of, wait a minute. Man, that, that paint is sticky. What did I do? There we go. It wasn't wet enough. All right, let me get a smaller brush. I'm going to have to go to a smaller brush because I got, I got tiny here. All right, I'm jumping into some Terry Tardy Turquoise right there. There's a little Terry Tardy in there. Uh, I need a little bit of yellow right up here on the star, just right there for the star. And then I want some lights. And watch this. I'm going to take my little pen, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to do some little light bulbs like this. I think you understand where this is going. It's going to have these little lights and these are all the ornaments there's one hanging down here's another one hanging down here i can add them off to the side i can do i can do anything i want people it's my piece of art so you know don't get uh don't don't frustrate yourself by saying oh i wish i'd have done this don't wish just do it just grab the brush and go bonkers a little bit i've got paint everywhere what happened okay i don't know but i messed up somewhere okay little uh ultramarine blue right there maybe a little blue right here okay now i want um, i want some orange i don't have an orange bulb right there's an orange little orange bulb right up there and that orange is like painting with molasses today it is not coming loose from my brush okay there we go get in there okay now, let's see. How about a little spring green one, too, just right there? Just a little. Oh, that's kind of a turny, turned into a little muddy one. Um, now, what I can do is I can come right back in here and just paint some light bulbs. There's a yellow bulb. There's a red bulb. There's one. You see what I'm doing? I'm just, uh, here's, here's one over here that's a lavender. Lavender. Who puts lavender bulbs on their Christmas tree? People who are into uh, essential oils. <laughs> hey, I get out. In fact, uh, I think Michelle was at my house the other night when uh, they made some uh, lavender, some lavender dessert. And I kind of came in and had some and went, okay, I'll, I'll pass on that forevermore. Um, if y'all love it, take it home. I never want to see it again. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. There's a little box of direction or uh, directions, decorations. You can see what I've done here. I've just made this little box, uh, this little box of, or this little bucket full of uh, decorations. Add a couple extra pieces in there, just like you see a couple little things peeping out. They really don't have to do anything. They just have to look like they're there to serve a purpose. Okay, so there's 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 a bucket full right there. Okay, now let's put a little wood on this here, and uh, let's see what happens. Here we go. Whoops. Great day. Never struggled as much with my paint. You know, you, you move everything away, and you put it all, hook it back up, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Here we go. All right, here we go. Just putting a little brown down here like this, leaving some holidays. Hey, how many times do I say that? Uh, more than you want to hear. But I still look at people's paintings, and it just looks like you forgot and colored the whole thing in. You go, oh, let's make sure we get all this colored in here. And it's just solid. And you're going like, let this breathe, okay? I should be reminded to never do that, but I just did it. Okay, so... Um, Get a little, uh, I use a different color for their beaks. Their beaks are probably more yellow and black than anything. I use a little bit of a different color just because I think it makes uh, a little contrast between the yellow bodies. So that's why I do that. Uh, you know, I'm always taking a pin and, and cross hatching like this. Notice I'm not going back and forth. I'm doing this. Zip, 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 and then I'll come back and I'll cross hatch this way. Why do I do that? It's no particular reason. No one taught me this. It's just a good way for me to show uh, dirt and, and let this pen bleed. 
without red in it. What in the world is going on with my paintbrushes today? They will not let go. This is defective water. <laughs> they will not let go of the, uh, see that, how that just, this brush still has red in it. Where did that come from? Stick in the green, see what happens. There we go, look at that. Okay, now I've got some earth in there. I feel the earth move under my feet. How about a little purple right here just to show shadow? Uh, maybe over here too. And there's your little Christmas painting, okay? So let's put uh, let's put a little bit of uh, some blue in there. Just in the sky a little bit. Grab a pen here and just splatter. I'm holding this off like so. Just give it a little blue splatter. That's probably a little heavy. So what I can do is just come in and touch it like this with a paper towel. Still getting some dripping out of my brush there. Had a lot of paint on my brush today. All right, so um, looks like it's snowing blue. Let's, so let's, let's just get a clean brush and just put some of those together. This brush, oh, I see. I see, I've got red paint on top of my jar and every time I wipe my brush off, I'm putting red back on it. The artist today is not too smart. Great Scott Waldo. What's wrong with that guy? Okay, put a little red in the sky there. Oh well. Maybe it's getting near, near dusk. All right, so there's the there's the painting, and uh, he, they're saying, uh, "You sure?" Yep. Mom says all. Dad does is throw it at the tree. All right, there you go. So you see what's getting ready to happen there. A little bit of a Rube Goldberg. They're just getting ready to decorate the tree. Did I paint that whole thing and forgot to paint this bulb right there? How could I have forgotten that little bulb? Okay, so there you go. So there's a little Christmas painting for you, boom. <laughs> um, <coughs> you sure they're getting ready to jump and throw all this toward the tree yep mom says all dad does is throw it to the tree throw it on the tree so there it is right there there's your little christmas painting how fast can that happen if i wanted to clean up my tree just a little bit i could go in some dark spots here a little bit of this green just mixed in my brush and come back in and put in some extra little pieces. And one of the things that I don't even care for on this tree was that the holidays that I left in there originally just sort of went away. They left me. Uh, too much bleed in there because I went back. So um, not, not, my, not my best tree, but yeah, it kind of works. It's kind of a decent Christmas tree. So there it is right there. So there's a Christmas painting. Hey, um, I'm going to start on another one, but I'm going to tell you something about uh, art. Uh, his name was Lenny, L-I-N-N-E. L-I-N-N-E, -N -N -E, Lenny Hutto, and his company is called TimberWoodPrints.com. Timber Wood Prints. It just says Timber. <coughs> Excuse me. And Lenny, Lenny actually would go out, and some of you who saw the show on Saturday when I was walking around the Indie Craft Parade in Greenville, South Carolina, I walked past his booth, and there was this prints on paper that were very close lines, and, it's, and I saw cut of a tree there that said timber burned in it and uh i said oh my gosh and so i read a little paragraph i said hello and i'm standing there so i, I said i'm gonna come back so i came back and i wanted to interview him a little bit which i did cool guy um they were standing there and i said tell me how you take how do you get the print from the wood to the paper and this guy thinks like an artist okay I don't know where he learned it. I don't know if he came up with it. I don't know the whole history. I've, I've gone to his website already, but I just wanted you to know about him again. Pleasant guy. In fact, I interrupted him tremendously later. I went back and I said, have you ever thought about taking watercolor and adding it to some of these prints? And he goes, yes. In fact, I just bought some watercolors. And I said, well, it, depending on the paper you print on, he said, I paint on, I print on watercolor paper. And I went, come on. Show me a piece. And so he takes a piece, he hands it to me, and I'm going like, this is hot press. He goes, yeah. And I said, this is, and he said, uh, this is uh, uh, Fabriano. And I went, man, this is Fabriano Studio Classic Hot Press. He goes, 
how do you know that? And I go, I think like an artist. And so we had this conversation about paper. I said, because if you use cold press, it would be hard to press all to get the detail. So he's using this, but he does this pressing himself. He cuts the piece of wood. He sands it down a little bit. So you got this end of this wood piece like so. It's got all the little grain in it. And then he uses heat to sort of melt back or burn back the soft tissue of the tree, okay? And that leaves the hard grain sticking up and he inks that and then presses that into the print. And so the only thing I did in the interruption, well, it's not the only thing I did, was that I encouraged him and I said, you got a great write-up on the back of these prints uh, and when they're framed, they're beautiful, but I would encourage you on the front side to put put the the... A, a location, a GPS or a longitude, latitude. And he said, I've been thinking about using a longitude, latitude. I'm going like, dude, do it. And then I also said, what if this winter you just added a touch of splash of watercolor? Don't try to color them. Just go. Pff. And he goes, man, I wonder what that would look like. And I go, I reach in my pocket and I grab my little pan of watercolors and I go, let's find out. And he goes, you got to be kidding me. I laid it down. He brings it out there. I'm painting some. He's painting some. We're painting on one of his prints that he brought to sell. And he's going like, yes, I wanted to try this. I'm going like, and, and don't do this, do this, and splatter this way, and do this. And so I got into the root world, and the lady next door, Gwen, comes over, and she opens up a bag, because I'd opened up my root bag. I carry, I had my orange root bag with me, and I zipped it. I have an orange one that some of you don't know about, but I uh, I sold all my black ones, and so I had one of my Klein tool bags, and I just had it printed with my rue bag. And so I had my bag, and I said, this is my bailout bag. This is my buggy out bag. When I get ready to go places, this is this is what I got on my shoulder today. You see a picture of me out walking around? I got on my bag. It's got paper. It's got my paint. It's got my buggy out bag. It's got my coffee in it, my tea. In this case, it had a couple of those pastries in it when I met um, Burke. But uh got my hand out in the bag eating up beautiful pastry. So he had that. And so Gwen comes over. She's got a bag. She's got a set of Windsor Newtons and a brush. She sets her coffee down because I've been telling him sometimes I paint with tea. I paint with coffee. It'd be great to splatter. And as I'm showing him how to paint a circle around the coffee cup to make a coffee ring, I knock the coffee cup over on the print, on his table. <laughs> and I said, man, I am so sorry. And he goes, hey, no, it's no big thing, man. It's just, it's art. And I go, I like your style. So Lenny, it's timberprints.com. Uh, I like this guy's style. I like the way he thought like an artist. That's, that's who he is right there. And, and uh, look him up if you want to. Uh, Gwen was the potter from uh, uh, the lady who made quilt coats, the young lady who made quilt coats. Fabulous lady. We had a connection through camp. We had a connection through um, um, University of Tennessee. She was an architect student, as I was saying earlier. My daughter was an architect. It's just really funny. We started doing that. But here's some lessons that I learned about artists. So if you're taking notes for a minute while I piddle with something, I want you to listen to these very carefully. OK, so here we go. Uh, the first one is artists need to connect. Okay. So listen to me. Artists need to connect. If you're not connecting with other artists near you, if you're not going out and talking to them, if you're not doing an online show, uh, mind somebody's do one, connect, be a part. If you're just sort of sitting there going like someday I should probably think about doing that. I'm going to call you to action a little bit. It's the end of the year and you've got time. I'm not talking about New Year's resolutions because I, I think they're a wash for me anyway. But just decide that you want to do it. People who didn't paint at all during COVID and some of them started on this show are now painting uh, items and cards and original pieces that are going to get sent out someday and sold. Is that your goal to sell all your art? No. Your goal is to connect with people. Why? Because if you have that in you, it needs to be shared. If you have something of value, a piece of art or a story or a song or a book or a written blog or a, 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 a cartoon, whatever it is, if it's yours and it's original, it probably wasn't made just for you to hold in, into a box. It might have been made to share, to connect you with someone else. Not for your benefit as much as maybe for theirs, because it may push them to do that. That's 
that's the sharing of the connection. So for me to go into that booth and know that I helped Aaron set up, her art connects. One, because it's inspirational. Two, well, just the scripture sets that she does just take off. They sell because people go, oh, I love the artwork, and it's this truth facing me. It fits in a little thing, a, a piece of wood. I love it. It's there. Her Advent calendars are like that. Her Advent books or cards. My, my point is... The, the reason I wanted my vegetables to have something to say, not just because you got a, a beet or a radish on your wall, but my, I want people to look at them and go, dang, that makes me smile. That's what I want. I want them to think I connected somewhere. So you artists, you need to connect. You also need that community. So there's one thing to connect, but dig into a community this next year, okay? Dig in. Dig in. Thank you for supporting Rue and Rue Doodles and what I do. But thank you for Rue's crew. Thank you for helping John Robert Small start his class. If you haven't signed up and you want to do acrylic, for heaven's sakes, his classes are like seven bucks. Hey, I thought I was the cheapest class in the world. He's just undersold the thing. I love it. I made 57. He's seven bucks. Um, he needs to do this. Why? Because the man thinks like an artist, okay? Chip shows up at my house and sits right here off of this desk because he loves art. He loves coffee. He roasts great coffee, and people order it all over the place. My point is this. His art is going to grow and increase. And you know what he wants from me? He wants the next one. He wants critique. Community, connect, community, critique. He wants critique. He sends me an email. Just sent me one early this morning, late last night, and said, what do you think? And I said, best yet. Now, here's my two cents. Boom, boom, boom. He's asking for it, and I'm doing it. So people need critique. Have you ever watched the show um, um, uh, American Idol? If you've ever watched American Idol, and you see somebody on American Idol, and your ear has been created to, to catch tone in some cases. You can tell when someone is singing on key and off key. And you go, ah, it, it just doesn't ring true. A bell has a tone. A, a bell has a key that it rings in. Um, flat, dry, listen. Uh, that's that's an actual pitch that vibrates. And that's just how God created the earth. A is 440. It vibrates. Those of you who are musicians know that. I can tell you when the banjo key is out. I can tell you when the piano note needs to be tuned. My wife used to sit in like the third row when I was giving concerts. And she'd go... <clears throat> or she'd go... You know what that meant to me? Second string B needs to it's it needs it's flat. It needs to go up. Third string G it needs to go down a little bit. She could tell me that. Sometimes I couldn't hear it through the sound system. She'd go like that, and I go. And and uh, so, uh, and and I'd, I'd be playing, you know, it's an old line, and I'd go. Ba -da 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 -da. I'd say, oh, hold on just a second. My guitar, I think, is a little bit out of tune. It may not bother you, but it's bothering me. And they'd laugh a little bit, and during that laughter, I'd tweak that tuning, and I'd start fresh again. I'd start a song over doing a live concert. It didn't bother me a bit. I wanted it to be right for them, as right as I could do it originally, okay? So my point is I needed that critique from someone. The, Carol and I are delivering a cross today that I made for this church. Um, and here is a couple uh, pictures. I just want to show you a picture right here. Ready? It's coming up right now. First of all, let me just show you this. This is, this is it laying out in the floor right there, if it comes up. Kaboom. There it is right there. Okay. This cross is about uh, seven and a half feet long, and it's uh, about 50-something inches wide. Nothing's welded together. It's just cut pieces of steel laying there. Don't tell anybody. There's a, uh, I had a square involved. There's a circle that's clamped. Now, I used a tool to bend this. In fact, one of the tools that I used to bend this is this tool right here. Let's see if it comes up. Hold on one second. Let me just drag it up there. This is an 1850 mandrill. If you go to a ring shop, this cone, this rusty cone in the middle of the picture is weighs about 150 pounds, 160 pounds, and it's a steel solid cone, and it was made for wagon rights and, and uh, wheel rights to, to, to turn the hub on, on a wagon. I use it 
in a in a similar scale to make sure my circle is round. Uh, it's a, it's a long story on how it's used, but I do that. And then here's the final product that's going to the church today in High Point. Um, it goes here, boom, there it is finished. And so that's the cross that will be uh, up to High Point, North Carolina. She and I are delivering it today. Um, and this hangs in their new sanctuary. And so I got a hook in the top and it's welded up. And so they contracted me because they had known I'd done several of these. I did a whole series of crosses a few years ago called Rescue the Souls of Men. And I literally had shards and stuff and all these different. And I did one for this church and they loved it. And it became sort of their logo piece. And then it was seen in other churches. And I've done several others across the state. And so this one goes to high point. So anyway, but Carol... Uh, I'll call her four times during this and say, hey, I need you to walk out here, climb up this ladder. I saw a ladder sitting there. Look down on it. We're, I'm working on the floor, on a table. This, I threw it out on the concrete. And take a look at it and see what you think. And I need her critique. And sometimes she'll go, ooh, I think you made a mistake there. <laughs> and I'll go, just maybe, wait a minute, let me close this. I said, maybe I did. Uh, and so... Uh, And so I'll go back and I'll tweak and I'll turn. So here's the thing, American Idol. You thought I wasn't going to get back to that, right? So somebody's singing off key. You, you need, they need community. It's If somebody says, I'm good and I know I'm good and I don't want to hear from anybody else, that's a sign of poor community. So if you're saying, I don't care what anybody in the whole world thinks about my art, it doesn't matter to me at all. If you think that way, um, you say, I just do my art for me. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. Well, it does matter. Your grandkids, it matters to them. It matters to your family. It matters to people who tell stories about your art. It matters to you, really. You just don't think you can get better. And I'm saying you can. I'm saying you need contact. You need connection. You need community with people. And you need the trust of someone's critique to say, hey, that's not a good item. Um, and I'm just going to say it because I can and I should, especially to this community. There was some art at the show on Saturday that I just sort of walked past. It was craft. And it just, uh, I said craft. It just didn't have a pull. It didn't have an audience. Somewhere there's a community breakdown when someone's mother or dear friends or family member or just just. Uh, someone they trust in a relationship that they're connected with says, Hey, um, I think you maybe you're using too much of this color or who's going to put that in their house or where's that going to go? And so I think you need to think about your art. If you don't get other people involved, your art becomes, a, a, not only is it 2d and flat, it becomes one day and it becomes just a flat surface. You don't want to ever just put your art out there and say, I don't care if it sells or not. Um, you do. You, or give it away to someone who really needs it. But there was some art there that people didn't want to take for almost no money just because it wasn't good. And it's not my job to walk around and tell them, but they need community. So you seek your own community. You don't need me to look at your art and say, hey, did you like my art? I wondered if you like this or you like that. Because most of the people on this show are going to say, oh, it's amazing. It's good. Thank you. Great job. Um, but they're going to click the show and go, well, I, but I wouldn't buy it. And um, so to walk by Lenny's thing and say, Lenny, I love your art, man. I don't have a place for it. And I collect wood. And so it, Lenny's probably saying, hey, well, if you like it that much, you should buy one. And, uh, and he's right on. At the same time, I'm saying, I want a print that does this and this. So I'm not telling you to change your art, but I like what you're doing. And I'll probably have one of those in the future because I will love to tell his story. So I said, don't waste the card. Give it to me. And I put it in my pocket. So here's the art cards that I brought home. The young lady sitting next to us was selling ceramics. And I walked up and I bought this little ceramic thing from her. Her company is called Gloria Faye. And I said, your name is Randy. Why is this called Gloria Faye? Who was she? And she said, she was my grandmother. And I go, yes, connection. And I said, did she make this stuff? She said, yes. 
So here's Randy making some designs and ideas from Gloria Faye, who taught her well, and who I bet was a pretty tough critique. Sometimes critique from family can be brutal, but you have to listen to it. And, and they're saying, well, is there a market for this? Do people want to hang this in their home? Do people need one of these? This has a word on it, and I don't know if you can see it, if it's focused, but it's the word is this, T-R-A-Y-S-U-R-E, Trey Sure. And I said, Randy, I've walked by here, but I don't know what this word is or what it means. And she says, treasure. It's where you put your treasure. And I went, oh my gosh, it's brilliant. I'm buying it. And I paid $15 for this little fired ceramic tray. Randy doesn't have a lot of time in this. She doesn't have a lot of energy in this. She put a stamp on the back, but she painted it. She painted it with gold paint and gray paint, and she stamped the words on here, and she fired it in the kill, and she wrapped it up in her wrapping paper that she put it in. No kidding. That's her logo right there. It was wrapped in this. It was in a little canvas sack, and I took it home. I unwrapped it uh, at home, and I put it here. Guess what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to drop some black ink on it. I'm going to use it as my ink tray right there. And I'm going to send her a little picture and say, guess what my treasure is? My treasure is when I paint out of here. It might even be a great place to uh, to mix paint right there on top of that. Look at that. Just put a little mix in there, a little orange and yellow, and just paint right out of it and just paint all my little roofs from that tray right there. So my point is, is that uh, find something and... Um, that you uh, can connect, find someone that you can connect to and find someone that you trust and find someone that is part of your community and then give yourself a, a person back and forth who really will look at you and say, too much blue, too much red, too much yellow, too much this, too much that. Oh, I like it. Okay. It'll make a difference in the outcome. American Idol needs somebody when those people, when you hear it, who does that on the show that we all didn't like, but he's the guy who produces the show. That was, uh, what's his name? The guy on the end who's still on those shows. Uh, Simon. You knew that Simon was going to be brutal. He didn't care if he was hurt your feelings or not because that's how the show was written and produced. They needed somebody to say, don't quit your day job. Okay, that was Simon's job on the show. <laughs> his job was uh, he's going to be the ruthless producer who says, oh, man. You need to not sing. You need to be a manager for people who are singing. You need you need to run away from this. That wasn't your calling in life. Uh, can you learn to sing? Uh, it's harder than learning to watercolor paint, but you can. But you're going to have to really work at it, and you're going to have to train, and you're going to have to work hard at what you do. And so, yes, it can happen. Okay? All right, I got... Uh, couple minutes here to finish this painting because I was telling you my stories, but that's it about the artist. I want you to know too about Lewis Carl. Uh, he, a real McCoy artist, man, that guy um, uh, teaches uh, uh, composition and color at Bob Jones University down in Greenville, teaches fashion there. He's embossing his own paper and then pressing that and uh, doing some really cool stuff. Uh, and I liked his art also. So he didn't have any cards with him. And uh, <clears throat> I uh, <clears throat> I shot a photo of his uh, website. And uh, and I want to come back. Uh, and he had listed. And I want to come back and uh, go visit his work some. Because he had a couple pieces. Uh, he loves Italy. And he's done some Italian-looking art pieces that I just really love. And I think I know someone who would love one of those for Christmas. And so uh, I'll go back, but I wanted to study his work a little bit. Just and and at the, when you're there, kind of doing the show, um, it's hard to just buy a piece of art. I did buy a pot, and uh, I went down to Park Aaron's car away from the uh, uh, it, it, the artists, the people who were setting up had to park in a different lot. And I walked down, and this church was having a little vendor sale because they were saying, "Hey, there's going to be several thousand people walking in here today." for this event. And so what I want to do is I want to, we were, they want to capitalize on it a little bit, which I thought was genius. And uh, 
So I walked by and this young lady had this beautiful blue little glazed round pot with a lid. And I said, what's the price on this? And she said, how about 10 bucks? And I said, where did it come from? And she said, it was my grandmother's. And I said, how about if I don't even try to talk you down? Here's 10 bucks. And I love it. And Carol's going like, where did you find this? I didn't see this here. And I said, just bought it for $10 down the street. <laughs> and so uh, I love to uh, encourage other artists. She was out just making some sales. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, that's the kind of my art story. And I'm sticking to it this morning. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, I love just pushing my brain to do several things at one time. And here it was right here. There's a little. Remember that how I did that? Look, that, 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 and cross hatch that a little bit like this. Go right here and do something like this. Grab my brush right here, rinse it all out. This paint has gotten sticky this morning, so I'm going to have to spray it down today and let it uh, dance in the water a little bit. It's just been, oh my gosh. Maybe it's my brush. I'm going to throw that brush down and get another one here. I'll grab a little green and just come in with a little bit of grass there. And finish this up. All right. So there's my three things for you this morning. A little Christmas painting. Um, I'll see you tomorrow morning on the show. Get ready to take this cross up to high points. About an hour and a half drive from me. Got to go through the flowering metropolis of Salisbury this morning. And uh, Carol and I are going to run and do that. This uh, this gets one. <laughs> Oops. There's the painting right there. Oops. <laughs> All right. Uh, the real McCoy comes from uh, pottery. I'll have to look that up. That's a great thing. Hey, I want to go back uh, later today and read some of your uh, uh I'll read some of your comments and I'll respond back to them. Uh, take a sip right now. Thank you who you're going to contact today. Thank somebody you send a note out to. Just a good wish, uh, a prayer, a hope, a thought. Uh, uh, see if they're covered for Thanksgiving. And uh, I'll see you here, Lord willing, tomorrow if I make it through the rain and the high point. Uh, it's one of those days, but here we go. Blessings to you. I used to have a harmonica up here. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs>